the last thing we want to talk about, and this is something that um, I, I'm putting Mike on the spot. Mike disagrees okay. with you on, and I'm on. And I'm on the fence about. I well, we could we could disagree. That's the that's the beauty of being different people. Yeah, yeah. We could disagree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think this would be a. Uh, um, All right, Mike. Let me have it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, yeah, why am I talking? I'll let Mike uh, bring it up. Well, actually, I had I read a tweet that you put out. Yeah, if I can, uh, okay, I should have had it up already. Where you responded you see, I to, to be uh, about my tweets, and you still got one. Okay. <laughs> no, I got it because um, I uh, well, your tweets are uh, protected, but I screen capped it. All right, <laughs> and uh, I, you know, because I, you know, I, obviously, I'm a big fan of yours, but sure, sure. I had uh, uh hold on where 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 is it okay and, and, to, and to give a little bit of context it. Mike and I were having this disagreement with each other before we saw okay. your tweet okay. so uh yeah okay this is the tweet that I'm going to read it says we cannot continue to base our reactions to black men death on whether or not they are respectable yes. we must insist that we are outraged by all black males death black male studies insist that all black males life has value mm-hmm. Now, now the debate. Now, with this, and, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go on. With the, with the specific case, um, obviously you're familiar with some of the tweets that have been dug up, right, by Mr. Clark, and uh, some of the positions that uh, 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 Stefan Clark yeah. had regarding black his blackness and black women. And for me, that's just you know. I, obviously, I would never go out there and say that he deserved what happened to him because I don't believe that he didn't deserve what, what happened to him was uh, uh, murder in my eyes. They yeah, shot him in the yeah. back six times, and but at the same time, it's like when you reject your blackness, you rejected me, and I don't feel I don't feel that I you know I have a duty to go out of my way to. Support, you know. Well, I you understand, know, but, support but this is after this that. is what I mean when I say, you know, we have to think about our our own people with compassion, right? So, I mean, and I, I'll just use a, a great example. So, there are tons of, of people, black feminists, etc., that say all kind of horrible things about me, right? They say I hate women and that I'm, I guess, an MRA mm-hmm. or whatever that is, you know. But if if something happened to them or if their rights were trampled on, do I say because they didn't like me that that makes what happened to them right? And I know you're saying you're not defending the murder. All right. I'm not I'm not trying to put that on you. But what do we say? What is it? So what does our fundamental disagreements mean in terms of whether or not his life had meaning? And I could personally disagree with Mr. Clark. I do disagree with Mr. Clark. Right. About the things he said about blackness and the generalization that he makes about black women, because I have two little girls. I'm married to a black woman. But what is as a, as a scholar, as someone who studies black men, I understand the previous trauma that could have been had, had at the hands of a black woman, or if he had no trauma, the way that society socializes him to be, or his own self-hate and low self-esteem, or his possible depression, right? All these are possible scenarios that account for Mr. Clark's tweets. And I'm not saying that that's an excuse, but it's context. So how do I react then to black people dying when so many of us die. Do I say, well, look, let's go check the Twitter account. Do I, how do I feel if a black woman who shared that black men are trash, do I, do I not protest for her because she, she displays misandry? I have, I have black women. I know that I know have raped men. I know I have black women. I've met in my life that were friends of mine that talk about having non-consensual sex with their boyfriends. Do I not march for them? You see, it just gets so complicated. Because I don't know where we draw the line. And what I see happening with this debate is the same thing with Eric Garner, where people say, well, he was brought up on a sexual a statutory rape charge, I think, or child molestation charge. So somehow I should not Eric Garner. Um, what was it? it was Mr. Uh, was it Alton? Eric Garner was? Alton Sterling. Yes. Yeah. Not Eric Garner. Alton um... Sterling. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then I saw all. Oh this yeah, stuff, Alton Sterling right? was. He was. And then uh, again, was you know, about, uh, the uh, reason that uh, Eric Garner came up is because there was that piece from I think Madame Noir or somewhere where they were like, we shouldn't march for Eric Garner because of domestic abuse, right? And this man was innocent, but they're like, but I don't. Black men abuse women, so we shouldn't mar- march for people who are murdered by the cops. Like these things don't make any sense, right? Because again, I mean, I know the data. I, should I not march for women either? That's that's. 
that's the way that we police ourselves and pathologize mm-hmm. ourselves. And we say we understand the system of racism and white supremacy. And we, we seem to have no understanding of it whatsoever. It's not surprising that in a white supremacist society, black people hate blackness. In fact, that's one of the things that lets us know we're in a white supremacist society. And now that we have social media, the fact that one black man says that he didn't like black women or dark skinned black women and hated himself. What, what I mean, the tweets say that he hates his own blackness and other black people who share that blackness who happen to be women. Why is that surprising to me? Right. I just don't know. I mean, but I in a society that is, a, that is against us based on our blackness, against voluntarily us. trying to disassociate yourself from that. You know, you kind of lose your, you know, that herd protection is like. I agree. But what I'm saying is look at how many victims we have in our own culture that that do that. Right. Like these black women who are saying these black men are rapists and trash. They're doing the same thing. These black women who are saying. But individually, if, 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 you know, if that happened to one of the uh, one of those type of black men are trash women, I don't I wouldn't be out there, you know, advocating for her. I understand that. And I'm torn about that, too. But it's still a black person. And I have to understand it that. is, but if they don't, but the difference between like a like one of those black men are trash women versus, you know, this uh, brother Stefan guy, he he would when he responded to someone's Black Lives Matter tweet with like all I lives matter, it. you know, he he Listen, actively. I, I agree. Disassociated himself. And I, I don't think you can reassociate him with, but you think, know, but after he death. died because, but he died because he was wrong. You see what I'm saying? Like he, he died because they, yeah, he died because his view on all, all lives matter is clearly not the case. He was racially profiled. Oh yeah. For it, sure. Right. But I mean, his ignorance does not, does not determine the well, the, the worth of a life. And, and that's, I guess, that's what I'm saying. Like I understand personally, Right. Because I do because, you know, my wife and I talk about this all the time, like because I think that men are trash or black men are trash is a genocidal accusation. Because when I study genocide, that's what they call Armenians. That's what they call Jews. So I'm very offended by that. Right. But at the same time, that again, this is what I mean by studying black people with compassion. That you have to we have to understand that these black women are acting from a place of personal harm or or harm, trauma, or some of them just may be careerists. But I'm not going to use my disagreement to judge what their life is worth. And I think that that's the flip side of what many of these people are doing to not just, you know, uh, Mr. Clark, but also to Mr. Garner and to, to Mr. Sterling. They're saying that because you did something that we don't like, we don't have to support that or be outraged by the fact that you were killed right. unjustly. And those two things seem to be completely different categories. Well, I think there's some of that. There's some of the people that say that he deserved it because of his view. I will, you know, he didn't deserve his viewpoints. Don't mm. make him deserve to be shot like that or killed like that. But well, well, my take on it. I'll give you. I'll give you my take. Like, um, I was in the middle because my thing was, um, do we want to wait? Do we want to wait for hit for the right person to get killed? I put right in quotation marks to care because what happens is to me, I feel like if you let this go um, unpunished or, or un- unretaliated against, then you're just kind of leaving the same cop out there or the same system more emboldened to go do, do it to eventually um, get somebody who was not an all lives matter, black woman hating person. And do we want to wait for that to happen? When um, well, we don't have to wait for it to happen. It's it's, hap- it's happening as we speak. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's always going. It's always going to happen. But I'm saying if we keep making our a uh, constant assessment and saying I'm going to fight because even when we try to fight against all of them, we're barely making any headway. Exactly. So to me, if we start trying to litigate every single one on its worth and start even fighting less of them, I mean. Going f- with both guns blazing is barely uh, making a blip. And I just feel like we don't really have that luxury. And when w- I know with white people, they take every single opportunity to advance um, white supremacy. Yeah, they support murderers and like class people. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and but, not just, but not just that, they'll support people that they think contribute to so-called white genocide. Like, like and what I mean by that is uh, there's been a lot of stories, right, where the type of woman that they would normally hate and the type of woman that they would almost wish gets, as Mel Gibson says, uh, raped by a pack of niggers or 
killed by black people because they're dating uh black men like yeah yeah Mel Gibson said that I believe yeah yeah there's, there's been several stories where white women have dated or married black men or were chronic daters of black men they always dated them and then one of the black men um was accused of killing that white woman even though you know that they would hate this white woman call her a mud shark a race traitor say white genocide when they see an opportunity now to get to use her as a tool to get the big bad boogeyman of the black man suddenly these uh four channers and alt writers will turn this uh white woman that you know they would have hated alive and if they were school shooting they would have probably killed her themselves they will suddenly be the biggest like justice for tiffany you know oh, absolutely. yeah so like i feel like they don't have these qualms when it comes to taking down um black people well i think they kind of have a luxury that we don't have you know I, look, I completely agree. This, this is their world. You I, know? Look, I completely agree, and I, I, I feel the, I mean, I feel the argument. You know what I'm saying? I, I do at a personal level. Mm-hmm. Well, maybe it's an emotional. Well, that's, that's, what like, that's what I'm too. saying. I, I feel the same way, but there's another commitment there. Yeah, I just want to say one thing. They say you said they have a luxury, but it's actually I think it's the opposite. They have a luxury to let things go because they already have us under their foot. So if anybody had the luxury to not capitalize on every opportunity to get the other guy it's the white guy and they will still act like act like you know they have to take every single chance to put their foot on a black to white supremacy yeah 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 we're, i think we're the ones who don't who don't have that luxury to um let anything anything slide you know because but we're see, kind of on the on the bottom but here's what gets me though like white people you know and i guess i guess this is what I always i always find strange you know, because I, I constantly give presentations across the country, and I tell people, I say, "Listen, if you're really concerned about rape, then you be consider you be concerned about white men and white women. If you're concerned about domestic abuse, you're concerned about white men and white women because of their population. They're the biggest abusers out there. You're more likely to meet one of them to abuse somebody than you would to meet a black guy that abuses somebody. But then that seems to have no impression on how we think about black men. So then you get something like this, where it's like, well, black man said he didn't he didn't want to marry or didn't like." I find black women attractive and he hates blackness and, you know, it's about everybody's life. Right. And then we're like, well, he didn't take the right political stance or he doesn't like black women and black people. He wanted to be Asian, et cetera. And we say, fine, well, we're not outraged. Now notice what happens. We're not arguing. So we could disagree with him and we can say he's absolutely wrong, but we're not out. We're, we're judging him. We're not judging a system that killed a man who actually agreed with white supremacy in the system simply because he was black. And see, and that's why that's why I say at a personal level, I understand. But if the argument becomes, well, we don't like the individual and we're not attacking the system, we're not attacking the practices, we're not attacking the ideology that allows them to just kill a black man who by most means is, is practically conservative politically, then what are we doing? Because they're they're sh- they're surely gonna shoot somebody like us if they're gonna shoot somebody like him. No, well, anybody could get it. And he didn't he didn't realize that when with, with his all lives matter comments that he he he's basically giving cover to you know the people that are doing this i i he's, agree he's, su- he's supporting them i agree and he supported his own demise but he's still but he's still a victim and that's what i my view is because a brother i understand you 100 percent. but my view is is that all black people when something like that happens are victims despite their personal opinion so the same way that I don't get along with many feminists on their views of black men, if somebody goes out and shoots a black woman and she happens to be feminist, I'm still going to be like, you know, this is outrageous. We need to, you know, advocate on her behalf. If a black man who's a Republican gets killed by cops, I was like, this proves why he was wrong. But we're outraged because what we're attacking are systems and practices where we value every person's life as a black person. And while I adamantly disagree with Mr. Clark's with Mr. Clark's tweets and Mr. Clark's choices and his views of blackness, what I take to be a large extent self hate uh, and his view of black women, et cetera, I mean that's just kind of where I come down on that side. Not, and everybody doesn't have to agree, but I just, but, but like, I, w- I guess I would challenge the people who disagree. How far down do you want to go? How, I mean, how far down that rubber hole do you want to go? I will. I mean, that's a good question. You know, like you said, where do you draw the line? I, you know, I don't know. Because are we going like Alton Sterling? Like, oh, well, he was accused of sexual coercion, statutory rape, so we shouldn't march with him. Do we go to the point like a black man uh, was in a domestic dispute with a black woman? 
Did we go, you know, and, and, and again, how, what happens when we start flipping the, flipping the gaze? So we know, we know the prevalence of statutory rape and sexual coercion in our communities. So do, are we not mar- now not marching for black women who sexually abused or sexually molested a child? Are we going for a black woman that's been a, you know, perpetrator of domestic abuse? You know, are we going to do the same thing with black homosexuals or same sex couples do this stuff? I just, you know, it's how far do we want to go down? It? Because a lot of a lot of the domestic abuse associated with black same sex couples is, is, is linked to internalized homophobia. So are we are we going to say, well, they're homophobic, so we should march for the, 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 the gay victim because they internalize their own self-hatred? Nobody would ever say that, you know, I mean, for, I mean, for me. For me, one of the dangerous things about this, too, is like I said, I don't think they're doing this type of hair splitting when it's time to uh, railroad a black man. You know, like uh, George Zimmerman turned out to be like, you know, a heinous abuser oh, yeah. of white women. So you think, oh, he's he's hurting um, the white race by, you know, how he's treating his his white neighbors and how he's beating black women. But they're like, hey, look, this guy yeah. helped take a black guy yeah, off the street. He's still going to be. um um a, a hero so i feel like we can't really kneecap ourselves the the way the reason why i said i'm kind of in the middle is that my compromise is i'm not going to try to make anybody support um step on clark like i personally do lean toward uh supporting him because of the injustice i only ask that the people who um choose not to support him like for example in mike's case mike is the kind of consistent person who he would be the same whether it was, you know, a black woman bad mouthing black men or a black man bad mouthing um black, woman. black yeah, women. I understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. So so like there's a lot of people who I I see online and I know from their history, I know from their beliefs, like they're very anti Stefan Clark. And I totally know if the genders were reversed, they would be like, uh, oh, black women aren't given room to be problematic and whatever. They kind of bothered me because I could tell that you're doing a double standard that you would not um, do. So I feel like if you're going to support Stefan Clark, be the kind of guy who would also support a black woman who would be uh, problematic. And that's where I fall in. Like if if this was a black woman who was on some black men are trash business and she was one of these type of black women that we uh, mentioned who spreads a lot of white supremacist things about um about uh black men if she got Sandra blanded you know i would still be in the same so you know like i feel like i would be consistent either way and mike even though yeah. he's on the he, i wouldn't come out and say she deserved it no but no no he didn't deserve what he happened to him and we know no. why it happened to him it happened to him because he was a black man and they can do that to black men 